Hi everybody, it's me, Brandon. Thank you for joining me today for another skincare vlog. Today I'm going to be doing sort of a run-through of all the sunscreens that I use this summer, summer 2022. I really am excited about this video because I've used a lot of sunscreen, so we really need to get into this because it's going to take a while. But if you're into a sunscreen, you know, grab your popcorn, grab your chocolate, grab your tea, grab your coffee, sit down with me and let's go through all these sunscreen favorites. But before I begin, if you could please hit that like button down below if you like sunscreen videos, skincare research, nutrition, anti-aging. Hitting that like button really helps my channel and I really appreciate it. And definitely if you're into those topics like I just mentioned, sunscreen, skincare, research, anti-aging, hit that subscribe button down below. If you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you here. All right, so the first product is by no means a surprise. I've been using this product for quite a while. This sunscreen is a combination sunscreen. It is the Dermatology Non-Tinted SPF 40... Five. <laughs> so I tried to reach for sunscreens that are 30 SPF 30 or above. The Dermatology Moisturizer SPF 45 is a blend of zinc oxide and octanoxate, so has great UVA, UVB protection, and it's very extremely moisturizing. The cast is minimal on my skin tone. For deeper, darker skin tones, it might be a little on the casty side, but it does dissipate with time. I think this is probably one of my favorite sunscreens on the market right now as it is. A lot of people wonder if moisturizers are gonna offer enough protection for the skin, even if it has SPF. The issue with moisturizers that have SPF in it is that a lot of people don't apply enough to the skin as they would a regular sunscreen product. All sunscreens are moisturizing, but a moisturizer in particular, people tend to under apply. Just make sure that for me, I have to apply about four pumps worth of the Dermatology to reach a fourth of a teaspoon that covers my entire face and then another four pumps for my neck so that sort of gets me to that recommended sort of uh, rule of thumb the quarter of a teaspoon to get all the surface area and to reach that spf on the label there was another sunscreen that i use and it's very similar to the dermatology sunscreen it, the label has actually worn off by now but it is the realm Realm Reflect. This is SPF of 42, and this is a tinted mineral sunscreen. I know that Dermatology actually recently came out with a tinted mineral sunscreen that is purely mineral. I have not tried that yet. I might try that in the fall or winter or any season that I can get my hands on. I have to work through a bunch of sunscreens until I can do that. But the Realm sunscreen is very similar to Dermatology in that it is a moisturizer. It's SPF 42, so a little bit lower, not a significant difference, but this only has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in it, so purely mineral. It also has the iron oxides in here for the, the color as well as the blue light and visible light protection. The Dermatology sunscreen also, it also has, so the Dermatology sunscreen, one of the, I guess, highlights, I should say, in terms of the ingredients, other than the fact that it is anti-aging for protecting from the sun, protecting from UV. It also has niacinamide in it, and this is a B3 vitamin. Niacinamide has anti-inflammatory components. It may be good for acne, it may be good for hyperpigmentation, as well as wrinkles and fine lines. So niacinamide, great product. It's pretty much in everything. It's not necessarily a novel ingredient in the sunscreen, but I like that it's in there. I like to have niacinamide in my products. I personally can tolerate niacinamide quite well, and I think just having that extra anti-inflammatory component is extremely important, especially in anti-aging when inflammation is a driver of aging, as well as acne, you know, niacinamide can be very helpful in that. So I like to have that in my products that I'm using, and if it's a product that I can use and have on my face, during the day as well as the night, you know, like a moisturizer with niacinamide in it, I try to reach for that. All right, so I have three different MD Solar Sciences products, <laughs> SPF sunscreens that I have been using this summer. I'm gonna just tell you about the two that I have used the most, and that is the MD Solar Sciences Mineral Moisture Defense for the Body, SPF of 50. So even though this is sort of made for the body, I've been using this for my face. I love it. It's so moisturizing, extremely moisturizing. I mean, it has dimethicones and silicones that make it super silky and smooth. It also includes several ceramides, which are basically moisturizing factors for the skin. Helps to improve and maintain 
the moisture barrier in, in your skin. So it's extremely important and beneficial for just improving the overall moisture of your skin. If you have dry skin, the moisture defense would be a perfect option. But because it's so moisturizing, it's probably not that water resistant. I mean, I could feel, if I'm outdoors, I can feel sort of myself sweating and sort of sweating it off. So it's great, a great moisturizing sunscreen if you are maybe indoors for the most of the time um, and you have air conditioning and everything like that. So it's a great moisturizer, I think, for me, for just being indoors and having sun exposure through the windows. I, I try to use this quite a bit. It also has green tea extract in here. The extract is high in EGCG, which is a powerful antioxidant that can help scavenge free radicals oxidation oxidative stress is induced from the sun from the from pollutants in our environment and also just from daily living we get oxidation it's not all bad but it definitely does play a role in the pathogenesis of the visible signs of aging so having that extra protection on your skin is great surprisingly it also has iron oxides in here it's not enough to give it a significant tint but it does sort of camouflage the white cast it's not super casty on me on my skin tone which is why i really like this it's a purely mineral sunscreen zinc oxide titanium dioxide only svf 50 and doesn't leave a significant cast which i love so i i love wearing this one it's it's a great one i, I really recommend it and the other md solar sciences product i have is the mineral tinted cream spf 30 this is a purely zinc oxide titanium dioxide only a sunscreen. This only comes in a 1.7 fluid ounce tube versus the the one that I just mentioned earlier, the Moisture Defense. This is four ounces. Can't take this on a carry-on. Um, just be aware of that. But one point, it seems like tinted mineral sunscreens always come in a sm much smaller tube, so you use it up very quickly. Luckily, I got six of these for some reason. I think it was just like a a fluke or an accident i don't know what happened but i have six of them so i have to run i have to like get myself through them the md solar sciences tinted mineral sunscreen i think is great for people with skin tones that are darker than mine deeper than mine because the tint on here is actually pretty dark it's still extremely moisturizing it has iron oxides in here as well for that for that tint but it's just a little too dark i find that i have to and i know that it's controversial and you know judge me if you will, but I do mix it sometimes with a non-tinted MD Solar Sciences sunscreen, just like dotting on my face, just like, you know, dotting each of them on my face and then mixing it together that way. It doesn't really, I don't find that it messes up how it sets on my skin and I'm, I'm sure I'm still getting that SPF protection, but it just helps with the color. I, again, I'm having to use this up, so I tend to use this really whenever I am indoors and I'm not really going anywhere because I don't really want to have like a significant heavy makeup look on my skin. Still, great moisturizing product. This has vitamins C and E, which are great powerful antioxidants. Again, help to scavenge free radicals. Potentially helpful for also fighting off that oxidation that occurs with the sun. Also has fruit extracts in here, which may provide some antioxidant protection as well. And I recently just got the MD Solar Sciences Mineral Cream SPF 50. This is different from the moisture defense in that it's still a mineral only sunscreen zinc oxide titanium dioxide it has it has a little bit of iron oxides in here as well but there's no tint it's pure white well not pure white actually it has a it's a little off white so i think that helps to sort of camouflage the tint of the of the minerals the, the zinc oxide the titanium dioxide but it it feels it, it definitely is still moisturizing but I feel like this one is probably more water resistant than the Moisture Defense. I don't feel like this is as moisturizing. It actually is labeled water resistant for 80 minutes. So you can keep this on for about 80 minutes before you have to reapply when, if you're outdoors and you're perspiring. Just like the tinted mineral sunscreen that Indie Solar Sciences has, this has vitamin C and E, green tea extract, I believe, as well as some fruit extract. So you might be getting some extra antioxidant protection. I'm gonna be using this up some more before summer ends, undoubtedly. And so I will give you a full review of this product and maybe even compare the MB Solar Sciences product, products or SPFs in a future video. Okay, I just wanted to round out the mineral sunscreens that I use this summer. This is the Mineral Fusion SPF of 40. I have, I think I've talked about this on my 
videos before, but this is a purely mineral sunscreen. When I first started using sunscreen, the Mineral Fusion sunscreen, it was the very first mineral only sunscreen that I started using on my face. I loved it because it provided me a significant glow and it was extremely moisturizing. This has jojoba oil in it or jojoba oil in it, as well as shea butter. These are very moisturizing ingredients that also have, have antioxidant potential that have shown protection against the oxidation that comes from the sun. So if you have an oily complexion or acne, this might not be the best product for you because it does have the, those oils in here, but jojoba oil, great antioxidant rich natural emollient oil. Shea butter is a really moisturizing oil. It also has some occlusion properties that can help just occlude moisture in the skin. So I love those ingredients. Also rich in antioxidants. And this also has essential oils and some natural fragrance in here. So if you're not used to that, or if you are sensitive to that, or you just want to avoid fragrance altogether, the Mineral Fusion Purely Mineral Sunscreen might not be the best for you. It has no tint either, so it might not be the best for darker skin tones. It might leave a cast, but very moisturizing. Possibly you could wear this underneath makeup or a, another tinted sunscreen and do just fine. I would also, I would guess that this is not water resistant. I mean, it, said, it doesn't say that it's water resistant, so I, I would say that it's not, but it does make your skin look glowy and it just gives an extra boost to it. So this is the Purito Daily Go-To Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA4+. I've been wearing this consistently throughout the summer as well. Whenever I want to go out and I don't want to have a significant cast like from a mineral sunscreen and I just want to have just a lightweight product. This I find I really really like. I love I love the, the original formulation and I really like the new formulation as well. They've added a lot more filters. They've added, let's see, Tinosorb S for UVB and UVA. They've also added Uvenol T150 for that UVB. There's a little bit of titanium dioxide in here too for I think UVA2 protection as well as UVB. There's also Uvenol A+, which is a fantastic stable chemical filter for UVA protection. I, I really like the Purito products. I like the SPF sunscreen that I've worn this summer. What I found though recently is that it is a little bit on the greasy side. This has fantastic filters in here that protect against UVA, a great anti-aging sunscreen, but I don't know if it's just too greasy for me and my skin tone, or I don't know, has anyone else used this? And can you tell me any more about your experiences? I might buy it again for the fall. I'm just not sure if I should stick to this or try to some find something that's a little bit less on the greasy side. That's just been my perspective. So this also has Centella Asiatica extract in here, the, daily, the Purito sunscreen. Centella Asiatica may have anti-inflammatory as well as anti-glycation properties. Glycation is basically when a sugar links up to a protein like collagen and leads to the degradation of that protein. So that can be very great. That can be very uh, helpful, I guess, for people who are looking for a little extra anti-aging boost in that regard. And there is some research showing that Centella Asiatica extracts can also help to boost the skin's moisture and reduce trans-epidermal water loss. So really help to strengthen that moisture barrier. So that's probably why I feel like it is on a little bit on the grease, greasy or moist side, which I'm trying to really move toward a more matte finish. I wanna have something that makes me look like I'm not wearing anything that's going to be a hard a, a very difficult challenge i i foresee because i feel like all sunscreens are moisturizing and leave your skin glowy so if you have any suggestions on a matte finish sunscreen hopefully one that actually contains the korean and european sunscreen filters like even all a a plus and even all t150 leave me a comment down below and let me know if you have any recommendations. So this sunscreen right here that I use also in the summer, I got this on, I think, YesStyle, but this is the Round Lab SPF of 50 PA4+. This is another Korean sunscreen that I actually fell in love with. The only issue with this is that it's a 50 milliliter bottle, so it's also quite small. I went through this pretty quickly, but I use this when I was traveling because it was very, very small. I could put it in my carry-on bag and also it doesn't really leave oh, a significant cast. Oh, it does look like it left a cast on the ground though. As you can see, it just sort of, it melts into the skin. It's not as thick as the Purito. 
The Purito sunscreen is actually pretty thick on the thick side. This is more of like a watery lotion. The Round Lab is great in that regard. So I didn't find that this was super greasy or left my face looking significantly shiny, which I really appreciated. It has Uvenol A Plus for that UVA, Uvenol T150 for UVB and UVA. It also has two other filters in addition to niacinamide and licorice root extract, which help can, can help calm inflammation and reduce redness. And there's several botanical extracts which may provide antioxidant protection. There are a lot of emollient alcohols in here, so doesn't leave your skin feeling dry. I'm going to order, again, the Round Lab so I can have it into the fall and winter. I can have it throughout the, the rest of the year because I really liked the sunscreen and I really appreciated, again, the light lotion-y feel in contrast to that Purito thicker but moisturizing sunscreen. So the Land Bell, which is the natural freshen up sunscreen, this is an SPF of 50. It's another Korean sunscreen that I actually ordered on Amazon. I can leave an affiliate link down below so you can check it out. But this is a Korean sunscreen, a bigger bottle. I like this as well. This was a little bit more moisturizing than the Round Lab Korean sunscreen, and it has several of the same filters, but it also has niacinamide. Again, a lot of the sunscreens that I use this summer have niacinamide in it. Kind of a hard ingredient to get around. I mean, a lot of products have niacinamide in it, but um, Again, I'm able to tolerate it, so I appreciate the niacinamide. Has green tea extract in here, thyme extract, which may... I was reading a study, and it granted it was like an in vitro study, but it was suggesting that thyme extract, topical thyme extract, can help to increase adaptogenesis or uh, fat accumulation, subcutaneous fat accumulation in the skin, which might have anti-aging benefits. In vitro study, there's not that good of a research behind it, so don't get your hopes up, but I thought it was interesting. So thyme extract might be a good in ingredient to look for in future products. Several botanical extracts in here for antioxidant protection. Green tea extract, I already mentioned that. I really like the, the Land Bell Korean sunscreen. You can get it easily on Amazon, American Amazon, so you can get it pretty quickly. I, I personally do recommend this. I would definitely buy this again for the fall and winter months. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but it also, let me see. Oh, look, there's some more in here. This also has a light lotion-y feel and it doesn't leave a cast. It, it does have like a thyme extract fragrance. So if you're sensitive to any sort of essential oils, then you might want to steer clear of the Land Bell. I actually personally like the, the fragrance. I think it, smells fantastic, but again, if you are trying to avoid fragrance, by all means, don't get that product, but just wanted to introduce you to that one because I really liked it. And to round out the Korean sunscreens that I got on, I think, Style Vana, actually, I got the Beauty of Joseon SPF of 50. This is, again, a Korean sunscreen, PA4+. All chemical filters. There are no mineral filters in here at all that I could Fine. So it has even all T150, even all A+. This also touts rice extracts. The sunscreen is called Relief Sun Rice Plus Probiotic. So it has rice extracts, which can be anti-inflammatory and as well as hydrating. It has niacinamide in here, green tea extract, just like pretty much all these sunscreens that I use this summer. And it also has probiotic ferment extracts, which may provide a little bit of extra UV protection may help to provide that photo protection. Definitely probiotic, fer fermented probiotic ingredients, you know, topically applied. They aren't substitutes for sunscreen, but they may provide extra photo protection that I think just provides an extra boost to your sunscreen overall. I have quite a bit left in this bottle, but this is a, I think, I haven't worn this in a while actually. Um, it's probably been about a month. So this is a, another lotion-y light, weight sunscreen that sort of melts in. No significant cast that I can see. It was on this hand. I think I'm going to move forward with those as well as just mineral sunscreens and the MD solar scientists that I was showing you. I'm going to move forward with those into the fall and winter months and undoubtedly I'm sure I will have other sunscreens that I am going to introduce and try out and experiment along the way so you can sort of Check out my journey if you want to, you know, hit that subscribe. I'd love to have you here again. But that was it. That was all the sunscreens that I used this summer. Did you use any of these? Do you have any recommendations of sunscreens that I should try out next and review? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to have your 
input, your recommendations, your comments, they, they mean a lot to me. So thank you for joining me today for this skincare vlog. I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. It was good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I will see you in the next vlog. Thank you for joining me. Bye.